So look what we got here. Husqvarna 455 Rancher. I actually bought this specifically to do a video on this saw. I have done probably at least a dozen of these. Taken them apart, put them back together, and I have not actually done a bolt for bolt video on this model, even though I've done so many. So I figured, you know what? Uh, I don't need this saw, but let's buy one. Let's do a video. Let's show people how to take it apart, put it back together, get it running again. Um, even if you buy a piece of junk like this off of eBay. Uh, so this saw obviously has some issues. It was bought off of eBay as a parts saw. Uh, something's wrong here. Uh, don't even know if it has compression. It does pull over. Feels kind of rough, but whatever. So uh, let's take her apart, put her back together, see if we get her running. First place to start, compression test. So let's get the top cover off. Sometimes you have to put the chain brake on to get the top cover off easier. So it's dirty and kind of messed up, but will still work as a cover. Again, always find a box. Stick all, everything in the box. Oh, that's loose. That's interesting. That's kind of a cruddy looking plug, huh? Yikes. Yuck. Metal parts tray. When we're doing a compression test, you want to thread this in. You want to make sure the decompression valve is like that, and then you need a clamp to hold the throttle open. I do this on the floor. Compression is kind of low. 75 pounds. That's not so good. Odds are this was straight gassed. Now, I really like straight gas saws because I know exactly what's wrong. Some idiot put straight gas in here. So when we're taking the whole thing apart, what we might consider doing is a pressure test. So we can pressure test this and check the seals and see if they're still good. And if they're not, then we know we need to replace them, which we're probably going to do anyway. Let's continue taking this thing apart. There's any number of ways you can do this. Um, clutch cover. Two bolts. Nuts, sorry. Dirty, but probably okay and functional. Let's take the chain brake handle off. Four millimeter Allen. There's a screw right here. These are odd looking screws, so they're easy to identify later. Screw right here. Before you remove this, you have to understand that there's a spring here that is easily lost. So rotate and out with this. And then be careful, this spring will go flying. And these are not cheap. Five, six, seven, eight bucks for one of these. So don't lose that. These rarely go bad. I don't think I've ever seen a bad one. One that's worn out. Let's take the whole handle mechanism off. So first thing we're gonna do here is actually work with the throttle. So this blue thing, you grab a hold of it and pull towards you a little bit and up. And then this throttle cable just lifts up and right on out like that. Don't lose this. Again, this is not a cheap part. Rubber barrier. Just a dust cover thing. 
There's a handle bolt here for the AV mount. Coarse thread. Here as well. And then there's this one down here, which was already undone, and it has integral with it the chain catcher. This one isn't too worn. I, I really look I like to look at chain catchers because it usually tells me how worn the whole saw is. That's not too bad actually. And then this thing rotates and out. So in case somebody wants to see that again, it goes in like this, it just rotates and out. After you're done with all that. Now this is a whole large mess of a mechanism, but best to clean all of that off and out. This is actually one of the things that breaks the most often. So, as evidenced by this part saw that I have right here. So I've got this part saw, and the handle's broken. Something probably ran over the darn thing. Uh, in fact, the handle on the bottom's broken too. So I've got this for spare parts. Usually the way that I like to look at these is there's stuff over here, there's stuff over here, there's carburetor. Um, so you kind of divide and conquer with all of this. Let's remove the clutch. So first thing we want to do is block the piston. So I'm going to put a piece of rope in here as a piston stop. Now you don't want to stick it in the, in the exhaust port, that's not so good. And then what you need is a tool. This is actually a socket. Uh, this clutch removal tool and <clears throat> you need to turn it clockwise. It actually says on here off so you know exactly where that's going and then you hit it with the this is an electric impact not an air impact so I'm not gonna hurt anything couple of wraps and you got it Brackets not too worn, that's pretty good. And don't forget about the needle bearing. Remove the oiler pinion. Should just unscrew and then pull out. No damage to that unit. So now the oiler pinion is, is out. One screw here holds this stainless metal piece on. Tiny screw. One four millimeter Allen holds the oiler in. Relatively coarse thread, small screw. to lift up on the oiler. Oiler comes out as does this rubber piece. Now this feels a little on the stiff side but hopefully we can replace that. So that's more or less it on this side unless we want to remove the dog which you don't have to. Just a couple of four millimeter allens for that. Doesn't seem loose so we can clean it with it on there. Now you can see the crank seals right there. There's one of them the other one on the other side. So let's <clears throat> Next we'll take off the starter cover for four millimeter allens or flat blade. Yuck. That's pretty achy and dirty. Now we have the flywheel, the shroud, the wiring. Let's remove all this stuff. Let me get the pliers. The, remove the wire, just pull. And 
this other wire is attached down here, so you can't remove that yet. Well, I guess you can actually, so let's, let's look at that. So right on in here, you take and you pull out the spade connector and the green wire, and then again, the spade connector on this other wire. And that just comes right out. Like that. Next, you remove the shroud. Make sure this isn't broken. It's not, it just needs to be cleaned. Now we can remove the ignition coil. Two four millimeter Allens on the ignition coil. Coarse thread. Notice the Notice the head on the bolt. It's a little different. Put all this together. All these pieces go together. A new magnetic tray is nice. Make sure it's not on the magnet, and this comes right out. Also inspect the wires to make sure there's no breaks. Looks fine. You can see the tank vent in here, by the way. Seems to be fine. I'm not going to mess around with that. This piece here is kind of fragile, so be careful about that. There is a 4 millimeter Allen buried down in here. Small screw, coarse thread. Needs to be cleaned, obviously. 13 millimeter. Make sure the nut is up about flush with the crank itself. A little bit of PB blaster on there. Lift up. There. That's all you need. A few wax. This comes loose. This is an integral washer and nut. The flywheel with the key still intact. We'll clean this. Here's the other seal. We've worked on that stuff. Now we've worked on this stuff. Now let's work on this part a little bit. Yep, the air filter comes off. The primer bulb actually looks pretty good. So two hoses here on the primer bulb. long hose goes to the, the long part of the primer bulb. The short hose that goes to the carburetor here goes to the short part of the primer bulb. Although I'm not so sure it actually makes that big of a difference. The primer bulb comes out. Just like that. The whole carburetor here comes out with four Allens. Two here and two here. Two Allens on the top. I believe these are longer Allens on the bottom. Four bolts. Might as well start a new magnetic tray. Now this doesn't quite leave yet because there are two rubber pieces on either side. So you press this this way and there's a rubber piece right here that holds it in, so you have to pull this back. And we're going to 
pull this back on this side. Same thing. And the only thing holding this whole mechanism back here is the choke rod. Big screwdriver in here. There we go. That pulls that out. This rubber piece comes right out. So the rest of this should just come gently apart. Put this lifts up. Oh, uh, there's a gas line in here. Gas line right here. Push the gas line off, pull the carburetor out. Think that needs to be cleaned? I think that needs to be cleaned. The impulse line happens to be right here. And it goes to this part of the intake manifold. So you have to pull that off of there. There. That's how to do that. So I pulled the impulse line off of here. Now you've got the impulse line. Now you can more easily access that for doing a pressure test. This may be a crappy spark plug, but it'll work for the pressure test. So let's put this in here. In order to do a proper pressure test, you need the MIDI vac, which is this thing, but you need a, an assortment of little rubber pluggers to actually plug up these holes. So that's one. Fits perfectly there. Now these two here. And these pluggers do actually come with the Midivac kit. So I'm going to try to remove these rubber pieces here. This is the Silverline Elite Automotive Test Kit, by the way. You've got the intake blocked off. We've got this blocked off, the spark plug hole. The next is the exhaust, which is going to be a bit of a trick. Five millimeter Allen, three bolts. One. Two. If you can salvage the gasket, they're kind of fragile. You can save yourself a few bucks. The gasket goes between the shield and the muffler. So right now, doing a pressure test, I need to get a piece of rubber for here. So I just get a piece of rubber, place it over the exhaust, So the rubber, so the rubber, this is just bicycle tube by the way, the rubber goes over the bolts there, and now we can just place this back on here, so when I put these screws in, you just stretch the rubber just a little bit to open up the hole, because otherwise it's just going to bind. Now we've got one, two,
three exhaust bolts are tight and there's rubber between the exhaust and the cylinder head. So now we've got the exhaust sealed, we've got the intake sealed, and I, the, the rubber piece wasn't working so good so I'm using a socket actually, that uh, actually a socket extension. And we're going to crank this up, I want to go to about 7 pounds, it's losing very slowly. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some soapy water on the seals and see if that's where it's losing. It could be out the exhaust or the intake and none of these are perfect but let's see if we can see where it's actually losing. So I'm going to bring this up to pressure five to seven pounds somewhere in there a little bit of soapy water on the seal here it didn't, didn't burn up because of this seal. So let's try vacuum. Seems to hold vacuum pretty good. I don't see any Sometimes you might see drying here, but I don't see that. That looks like it holds. Pump it up to pressure. Don't see any bubbles. See about vacuum. The vacuum seems to hold pretty well too. So these seals I'm not actually worried about. Now I'm probably going to change them anyway because as you pull this apart, that's basically what you got to do anyway. But <clears throat> the seals is not what killed this saw most likely straight gas. Usually what happens to these. So we've pressure tested both crank seals and that is not the reason that this saw died. There's no air leak there. So now we have that piece of information we can continue breaking down the saw. Let's take the exhaust off again. For the record, I don't like this rubber setup, but it's what I got, and it doesn't work, at least for now. So exhaust, three bolts, M6. So now we can look at the piston and ring here. Looks like quite a bit of damage to me. Um, oh, one thing you should do, by the way, which I did not do, is as you do a pressure test, you want to rotate the crank through its cycle remove that component. Again, I'm not really worried about the seals at this point. I don't think that's what killed this saw. Four M6 bolts on the bottom hold the cylinder on. And they're kind of buried in here, but you can trust me. One. Two. Three. you should be able to pull this up. Oh, crank still attached. So you can press down on the crank and this whole thing comes apart. So we can inspect now as this is going, we can inspect the seals, the lower seals,
gently peel the seal off wherever it's stuck to. That one's a little ratty looking. So now we're going to take this and put it aside. And we're going to look at the cylinder itself. There's enough rotational marks on here. It almost looks like somebody honed this cylinder. And this ring is completely stuck. This piston is completely shot. It looks like somebody stuck a hone in there. There's rotational marks. Looks like somebody tried to clean that up. Which really means if that was the case, odds are this whole thing is cooked because you can't do that. A little bit of a hone, probably not a problem, but actually sticking a real hone in there and going for it, you're just going to remove plating. You're not going to help anything. So this probably needs a new cylinder. New piston, new cylinder. And as I've been going along here, I've been trying to keep a parts list, but there isn't too much that actually needs to get replaced. So let's do the parts list. We need a piston. We need a cylinder. Uh, probably new seals here, just because. New lower seal is a good idea as well. The only th other thing that I saw that it needs is a spark arrestor in the, the muffler. Let's take this apart. So you can lift this whole mechanism out, by the way. Just like that. Um, the book says to not reuse these seals. Uh, I don't see a problem with it as long as everything in here is clean and you probably stick a little bit of Loctite 515 on them. Check the bearings. Bearings seem smooth. Seals just pull right off, just like that. Depends on how adventurous you are if you want to save them or not. the circlips out. There's one. Don't lose them. They are important. I like to use a nice big Allen to push the piston pin out. Just like that. So here's the, the wrist pin, you can save that. This piston is shot. We do wanna clean off the crank and the bearings, but I don't see uh, an issue with reusing these. these. This looks fine. Because I'm suspicious here, I'm gonna pull out the fuel line. Nice long set of pliers and you can pull the fuel line on through. If you want to actually diagnose this, it feels kind of swollen to me. So let's go back to our Midivac and diagnose a fuel line. Set of hemostats, set up the midivac to pressure. Well, I don't see a particular issue with this line. Looks a little constricted here. Looks a little swollen elsewhere. But in general, I don't see a particular issue with it. So as far as I can see, the line is not at fault. I don't see any broken pieces on this chassis, 
So I'm just going to reuse this. So I'm going to go clean this, make sure this is all nice and clean. Um, there are a few other pieces that you can pull off of here, by the way. One is pretty important, and that's the, the ground. Um, this is like the last piece you want to forget. <laughs> you really don't want to forget this. So this is a ground strap, and it goes from the ignition coil to the cylinder, essentially. So one of the cylinder head bolts actually holds on to it. So you do not want to forget this piece. So that's more or less a full tear down of this. I mean, you don't really need to tear it down any further. Um, there's the oiler rubber piece here that you can pull out. Sometimes those develop a leak right at the bend. But for now, I'm not going to worry about that. Let me clean it. Start putting it back together.